this is gonna be a hard video for me because I can't please anyone with this one. I'm gonna compare and not with numbers as we typically do, but the essence of these credit cards, the most polarizing credit cards, the Amex Platinum and the Venture X. Venture X came a couple of years ago out of nowhere and it started offering 100,000 points, uh, sign up bonus, and then it has the uh, credits that offset the annual fee. And when adding to the mix, the Capital One privately owned lounge network, then it starts reminding you a lot of American Express. I can't blame you for that. Many of you uh, get disappointed or get very happy when I compare these two credit cards, uh, depending where you stand, of course. And although I do have a horse in this race, I am not married to anything. I can change credit cards just as I was changing girlfriends back in the day with no issues and no emotion. So I would always go with whatever makes sense. I asked you some time ago what you think if the uh, Venture X can thread the uh, Platinum and just under half, you said yes, that it can. And that made me wonder, where do you base this? And I start putting some points down. What is the Venture X and what is the Amex Platinum? Supposedly, they both are premium travel credit cards. And when it comes to premium, there's a lot of gray area. Uh, there's no way for me to judge correctly what's premium to you. Something that I value, maybe you don't, and something you value, maybe I don't. The one thing that comes consistently is how the Platinum is a coupon book and how you have to go out of your way to get real value and offset that annual fee. As I said, we're not gonna talk about numbers. We've done these numbers before. There's videos that I did like not so long ago that we compare all these credit cards and we talk. I wanted to see what's a premium credit card or luxury. I wouldn't call it luxury because, well, I guess you can call it luxury. By definition, anything you don't need Everything that's not a necessity is a luxury. Travel, unless it's necessary for your work, is a luxury. So travel credit cards that you personally own for pleasure are luxury by default. Now, there's different kinds of luxury, as we're about to see. And let's start with the Platinum, because I think the Platinum sets the standard here and it's the oldest credit card. It offers status with hotels and rental car companies. And what does that mean? You can go to Hilton, you can go to Marriott, get the status, uh, the gold status that they offer is not much, especially here in the US, but abroad, I'm sure you're gonna get a whole lot more value as I've seen, um, at least with Hyatt. If I get a little upgrade here and there, if I get a breakfast, then that's a luxury that I wasn't gonna get otherwise. Same goes with rental companies. You can rent something uh, dirt cheap and then get something that's um, one level above. So you're gonna get value. Is that something that you're not paying? No, you are paying for it, but you're getting something better for the same amount that somebody else is paying. So that is luxury. It has the best lounge access and when I'm talking lounge access, it's not only the network. Yes, it has the priority pass, but many credit cards do that. You can enter the Sky Club when you fly Delta. And of course, you can enter the Centurion lounges and all the Amex lounges around the world that are not called Centurion. I don't know what the difference is really, to be honest, but there's many other lounges that are not called Centurion and they're around the world um, that you can enter. It has by far the best purchase protection. Uh, it's not even close. If you ever bought something and you needed to return it and they didn't accept it or you lost your money somehow, uh, there was a fraud or whatever, and you ever had to call American Express, you know how quick they are to protect you uh, regardless of the situation. Which brings me to the best customer service. The only other company that I heard similar comments is the Discover. And if you notice, both of these companies, American Express and Discover, they have their own network. Um, so they're not based on Visa or MasterCard. They have their own network, which is why and how they're able to be so quick and decisive on their actions. So that's a big plus there. Of course, as we know, this brings uh, some downsides, especially the American Express side, because they charge a lot, all the merchants, and they don't accept these credit cards as much as they do with Visa or MasterCard. S slowly start getting better, but not there yet. And then it has the credits that offset the annual fee. Many of you say that it's a coupon book, and I will agree at some extent. 
when you talk about Walmart Plus, when you're talking about the Saks Fifth Peloton bikes, I understand how that can feel like that. But there's really some important benefits like the incidental credit, the Uber credit, maybe clear credit. I, I criticized that the other day, but many of you came and you said that you fly from New York, for example, and sometimes TSA pre is free the line is huge but you go through clear and you pass everyone which is amazing and my experience is that most of the times I just go through TSA pre and I'm pretty much good but I mean you have different experience and I will take that into consideration um, so if you take most of the credits that you can use on a travel then you need to travel really a couple of times a year and you get your money back so there's no question for that. When we take all the credits into consideration, I think that's when the criticism comes because yes, if you add them all up, they're like $1,600, but how many of them do you actually use? My guess is that on average, most of us use it just barely to cover the annual fee. But the VentureX is no slouch. When it comes to the Venture X, many of you get really emotionally connected with it because it's a much more straightforward credit card. You can only travel once a year and still get your money back. And I think that's the big selling point and the biggest argument that most of you have. But I can see some other things too. The Venture X gives some sense of premium or lounge credit card. In my opinion, as we will see, it's not to the same level as the Platinum, but I can see why many of you get uh, so emotional about it. It does offer a limited status. Um, so yes, it has presidential circle, president circle on Hertz, but uh, that's about it. It doesn't have anything more, but it's something. The lounge access, it has the priority pass and the private lounges, the Capital One lounges that the network is growing, but it's not there yet. Um, so yes, there's a lot of potential there, but they're not nearly close where American Express is. It has good uh, purchase protection. It has mediocre to bad customer service. And this is huge for me because as an old Capital One customer, I don't have any urgency to go back to them just because of the way I was treated. And I know that many of you had the same comments to say, so I don't think this has changed at least not based on the comments I see uh, in my videos. So in order for the Venture X to really compete, let alone beat the Platinum, it needs to improve the customer service. I think that's number one. It needs to improve the status. A part of having a travel premium luxury credit card is having status and experiences. It's all about the experience and the Venture X currently does not offer that especially when you compare with the Platinum. And then something we didn't talk, exclusive benefits like the Amex experiences. American Express has so many experiences. You can go on the website and find deals uh, for American Express Platinum members that you don't find with any other credit card. The Sapphire cards in Chase have something similar. I assume the VentureX might have something similar, but I know for a fact that the American Express has the best. I haven't even used the concierge yet, but I know many people have uh, to book in fancy restaurants and that says it all. That's luxury right there. And of course, they need to drastically uh, expand the lounge network. You can't be like I have hard time finding lounges with a platinum, let alone with the Capital One. And I'm based where the Capital One headquarters are. The airports around here should all have Capital One lounges, but they don't. And I think that's a big letdown. I think only one has, that's the one in Virginia, but the rest don't. And I think that's a big miss, especially when you are based here. So can it really compete with the Platinum? Not yet. If they improve all the areas we talked, then I can see it happening, but I think it's gonna be years before we can talk about VentureX competing really head to head with the Platinum. But to be fair, I think the Venture X may be the closest thing to a Platinum. Let me know what you think. If you think the Venture X really competes head to head with the Platinum, if it's there, if it's better, if you think that the straightforwardness of that credit card uh, makes up for everything else, uh, I've seen that comment too. So let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, ciao.